So we can draw our triangles in our paint program, but notice it's starting to get laggy. Right? I only have a couple of hundred triangles, and I can barely draw this. So what's going on? And can we do better than this? So let's go look in our triangle class, in our draw triangles. And the culprit is right here. So uh, you're getting instant knowledge, but one hour of debugging later, I figured out what this is. So there's this constant here, which is giving a hint to buffer data. This is buffer data is where we're sending the vertices to the GPU, the GLSL. And this is a hint about are we going to keep using it or we're going to keep resending new buffer data. And we had it set on static. And if we change it to dynamic, that's supposed to mean that we're going to keep sending new data. And indeed we are. We have hundreds of triangles and we keep looping over. Uh, for each triangle, sending it and then re resending. We don't have just one buffer that we're sending. We're, we're sending this buffer over and over. So dynamic means you're going to keep using it. So if we change this and we now start drawing. Okay, well, let's just resave and reload. So now we go try to draw. Now we're getting up to at least a thousand and we're not slowing down nearly as bad as we were before. So this turns out to be the key. We have to change this hint to the buffering of data to say that we're going to be sending it over and over again. And that's going to cause things to be much faster. So the next thing I want to look at is we now have a, we have a size slider. And we hadn't previously hooked it up, but I've now got it hooked up so that we can have tiny triangles and large triangles. And so how did we do this? So let's go back up into our class. And remember, we're storing the size. Every time we click, we're storing what the size variable was set. It's just initialized to 5, but it's stored. So I'm just going to use the size, and I'm going to calculate some delta for the length of the sides. And instead of just adding 0.1, we're just adding the, the delta here. So this is giving us the size. So the remaining thing to do is to add some buttons so that we can switch back and forth between points and triangles. OK, so here we've added the buttons, uh, point and triangle. They just added to HTML. So here, just like we had other buttons, we have point and triangle. And then we've hooked them up. So let's see here where we're setting up our um, actions for the UI. Here's our two new lines. So if we're on the point button, we're going to set our selected type to point. And if we're on the triangle button, we're going to set our selected type to triangle. And those I've just added up here. Just like I was keeping track of the size and the color, I'm going to keep track of the type. And, and I've defined a couple of constants just so I can have easier names instead of remembering 0 and 1. So then the next thing that we have to do is go fix up our click function. So we have a click function here. Here's our click function. And uh, so now, instead of just saying we're going to get a new point or we're just going to get a new triangle, we're going to check what is the current what is the current selected type, and then we're going to make either a new point or a new triangle, depending on which one we want. And we're going to set up the position color sizes and add it to the list. So now we should be able to have both kinds of things in our list. So, okay, so here we're drawing points. If we switch to triangle and draw triangles, now we can draw triangles, but there's something weird going on here. So the points have all disappeared. So this is some kind of bug that we have. So what is going on here? So the thing that's going on here is that in triangle, we've set up uh, a buffer and a buffer data array. And then we've used buffer data to pass a bunch of information into this array. So we're, we're putting multiple vertices in here. And then down here, we've enabled the vertex um, attribute array. So this is enabling using the buffer rather than just passing the points. If we compare what we were doing in point, rather than sending a pointer to a buffer, we were just specifying one point that we want to draw. So what's happening here? Since we've enabled the buffer array, this command is not doing anything. So we're not setting the position we wanted to set. And instead, it's just taking the last thing that was on the buffer. And the last thing on the buffer was this triangle that I drew. And so we draw a point. 
at, one, at the first vertice on that triangle, and we end up drawing that thing. So that's not what we want. So if we want our points to behave separately, what we have to do is when we're drawing points, we have to disable the vertex attribute array. So if we do this, reload, let me set my size bigger. Okay, we're going to be we're going to start out on green points. We can draw, and now we're going to go to red triangles. And we can draw a red triangle, and we can go draw green triangles, and go back to points, and draw green points, and the whole thing behaves. So what's happening? We're turning it off when we want to draw the point, and then over here in the triangle, it's getting turned back on when we're trying to draw the triangles. So now we can solve this problem another way also. So if we come over here into point, another way that this can be solved is rather than disabling the array, we can write the point that we want to draw into the buffer data, the same way we were putting new buffer data sending into our buffer. This is basically taking this data right here, the x and y point, and sending it into the buffer. And we're going to, we don't need to use this one anymore. So if we do it this way, what have I done wrong? Okay, what I had done wrong is when you first load the page, you start on point. But of course, if we haven't used a triangle yet, triangle is where we actually created the buffer. So if we start on point, we don't have the buffer, so we can't call buffer data. So as long as we start with a triangle, draw some triangles first and go back to point, we've got these things created. So now this also works. So what's the difference here? The difference here is we're writing it into the, the buffer data. So either one of these two methods is going to work. If you wanted to use this method where you write the buffer data, you're going to have to be careful and make sure that you've created the buffer before you use it the first time. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the other way um, because I think it's interesting to show that we can use buffers or not use buffers and turn these off and on in order to do it in, in, different, in different ways. So I have one last thing that I want to show you about drawing points and triangles. So here we are inside draw triangle. And when we do draw arrays, we've been calling draw triangles. So we've packed three vertices into this buffer object. And we pass the three vertices. And we say draw triangles. Those three vertices are interpreted as a triangle. But if we keep all the same uh, information going into the buffer, but we tell it that we want to interpret that buffer array as points, instead, now when we draw, Every time we try to draw a triangle, it interprets it as points, and it draws the three points that were on the vertices because we passed three vertices in. Now, why did everything on the screen turn to points? Well, because we've changed the code here, right? So every time we draw a triangle, we're, re we're, we're looping through the whole list and drawing the whole list, and the whole list is now being drawn as these points. So the, the point type is still is a separate point type, but when we're trying to draw the triangle type, then it's now being interpreted as points, and those things are are drawn this way.